Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name is Adam and today my buddy Paul has come by and he is going to give us a hand and talk about some hydraulics. So we've got a few different things that we're going to discuss uh, with this system here. This is a really nice um, hydraulic training unit that shows you all of the fundamentals on a hydraulic system. And Paul is going to uh, go over this. So, uh, by the way, I wanted to uh, point out that uh, uh, Paul has been designing hydraulic systems for a very long time. He has a lot of experience in them and also with uh, troubleshooting and preventative maintenance and uh, that kinds of things. So, uh, we've, got a, we've got a number of things over here on another table that you can't see yet. That uh, Some other components and parts that we'll, we will get to later and uh, zoom the camera in over there so you can see all that and uh, so um, I've got some uh, things here it's, it's going to be four sessions and your first session is going to be components of hydraulic system and fundamental elements that govern all of hydraulics okay your second session is going to be component operations and how they fail uh, third session is going to be inspection and troubleshooting and the fourth session is going to be how to prevent the most hydro the, the most common hydraulic accidents. So we are going to let Paul step in here and go over all of these subjects here. And I hope that this helps educate people on a hydraulic system. And uh, not only the viewer that's, that's that's watching this, myself included. I'm getting some something out of this today. And and uh, I, he showed me a few things on this, and it's, it's really interesting to learn how, how these systems operate and uh, the fundamentals of them. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going we're gonna to let Paul step in and uh, start talking about the system components here. Okay? Hope you guys enjoy. Hi, this is Paul from the shop, and Adam's invited me by to talk a little bit about hydraulics today. And as you can see, we've got a really nice hydraulic demonstrator here to be able to show you some things that uh, people struggle with out in the field uh, when they're trying to troubleshoot and things like that on a hydraulic system. So what we'll do, I've broken this down into four different segments. Uh, the first segment is going to be components of a hydraulic system and some things that govern hydraulics, the fundamentals of all hydraulics like pressure and force and flow and speed and things like that. And the second section is going to be about component operation, how each one of these components operate and how they fail. I got a little bit of background and reliability so we're going to talk about a little bit about how these items fail and how to prevent that. And then the third session is going to be about uh, inspection and troubleshooting. That's uh, always a common problem and of interest out in the field over the last 30 years I've done this so a lot of people don't realize some things that they have to have for troubleshooting so we'll go over that and then the fourth session is a little bit on safety uh, most common hydraulic accidents and how to prevent those uh, definitely don't want anybody getting hurt out there doing this so we'll uh, talk about that when I do a video or a class or something like that, I want to make absolutely sure that there's an objective that I want people to walk away with. So in this particular session, components of hydraulic systems and fundamental elements that govern all of hydraulics, uh, what I want you guys to walk away with on this is after completing this session, you should be able to field identify the 10 essential components used in heavy industrial hydraulic systems reservoir, oil, prime mover, pump, relief valve, directional valve, linear actuator which is a cylinder, a rotary actuator which is a motor, and fluid conductors like your tubes, hoses, fittings, things like that. And understand the fundamental elements that guide all of hydraulics. So if you walk away with understanding that pressure is force and flow is speed, you'll understand a lot more than most folks do when they're out there trying to troubleshoot hydraulic problems.
All right, what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about different components in a, stick, a standard hydraulic system, industrial hydraulic system. So the first one you have is the reservoir right here. And the second thing you have is the oil inside the reservoir, and you'll know how important that is by the time we get finished with all these sessions. Next is called the prime mover, which is usually an electric motor over here that actually drives the pump. Next thing we have is the coupling that's connecting the pump to the electric motor to allow the pump to turn. All right, the next thing is a hydraulic pump. And you'll notice that the pump is mounted below the oil level in the tank right here. And that's always the best way to do it because oil has weight to it and it keeps a, the pump primed whenever the pump is below the oil level. So that's always the preferred method on the pump. All right. So then you move up here to the safety relief valve. And what the safety relief valve does, it protects the system from overpressurization. Okay. So next thing we have is the filters. We got a filter back here. It's got a little difficult to see. And then we have inside the tank here a strainer. And then as we go through this into the next couple of sessions, you'll understand what a strainer does and how they fail and things like that. Then the next thing we have is a directional valve. Here's a directional valve here, solenoid operated. And then over here, you have a manual directional valve. You actually have to pull those with your hand. Next thing we have is a linear actuator that comes out in a straight line. And the next one is a rotary actuator that actually goes around and around. So in hydraulics, you only have two choices. You can go in and out or around and around, and that is it. So that's what makes that really simple for me to understand and should make it simple for you guys to understand as well. All right, the last thing that we're going to talk about in the standard things that come in a hydraulic system is the fluid conductors, and that is your hoses and tubing and fittings and things like that. Of course, these components wouldn't do you any good unless they're actually hooked up and you have oil flowing through the system, okay? So there's your inlet hose right there coming from your tank to your pump. Then you come out of your pump with this hose right here into this block here. Then you come with this hose right here into your directional valve. And here's your two work lines right here, your A and your B work line that go out to your hydraulic cylinder. And then here's your tank line that actually goes back through the filter to the tank. So that's the essential components of any hydraulic system in order for it to function is those components right there. All right. The definition of hydraulics is hydraulics is a means of transmitting power by pushing on a confined fluid. As you can see by these hoses and the way all this stuff is hooked up right here, that fluid has to be confined to be able to do work, whether it's pushing this cylinder out right here or rotating this hydraulic motor right here, that fluid is confined in all these hoses right here. So that's how it actually does work. There's actually three ways of transmitting power. One is mechanical with gearboxes and chain and sprockets and things like that. The second one is electrical with variable speed drives and things like that. And then the last one is hydraulics or fluid power, hydraulics or pneumatics, either one. So this is what we're going to talk about today, obviously, is hydraulics. All right, back in 1692, a gentleman named Blaise Pascal came up with the law that when you confine a fluid and compress it, it is equal and opposite in all directions. So that is the basis of all hydraulics. When you can't, you can't squeeze a fluid, all right? So in hydraulics, what you do is you fill up the back of the cylinder right here with hydraulic fluid, and it's because oil is incompressible, it actually makes that piston move right there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go over a couple of things that are essential in all of hydraulics to understand is the first one is flow makes it go. Flow is speed. If your component is speeding up or slowing down, that is a result of the flow that's coming out of your pump. Okay, so 
I'm going to turn the system on right here, and what it's going to show you is this pump is pumping right here 1.8 gallons per minute. Okay? So that pump is pumping 1.8 gallons per minute, and I'm not moving anything out here like these hydraulic cylinders or the motor. I'm not doing any work, but the pump is still pumping fluid. All right, where is that fluid going? Okay? It's going over this relief valve right here and going back into the tank, okay, through this filter back here. All right, so the only way you see fluid right here is when I actually actuate this cylinder and make the cylinder go in and out. All right. So one thing I want to demonstrate to you is pumps don't pump pressure, okay? That's one of the things that people, that's a common thing that people don't really understand. They say my pump's not pumping enough pressure. So what I want to do is go over that real quickly and show you how that works. Alright, you see on this gauge right here, I'm showing 400 PSI. Alright, the only reason I'm showing that 400 PSI is because I have my bypass valve closed and I'm forcing that oil right here across this spring inside this relief valve right here okay so you'll see if I move this relief valve in and out the pressure goes up or down based on the resistance to that oil that I'm pushing across that orifice right there alright so what I'm going to do is prove to you pumps don't pump pressure alright I'm pumping 1.8 gallons per minute right here so what I'm going to do is open this bypass valve and give it an easier path back to the tank. So what you'll see is, you see that pressure drop right there? That's because I'm giving it a free path back to the tank and it's not having to go over this relief valve right here. Okay? So as I drop that, open that up more and more and more, you see the pressure drops down. And now I'm gonna open it all the way up. So the only thing you see right here on the gauge is about 10 PSI. And the reason you see that 10 PSI is because it's taking that amount of back pressure to push that fluid through these fittings and through this block right here and make it go back through this filter into the tank. All right, so basically what I'm showing you is pumps don't pump pressure, okay? The only way you see pressure in a hydraulic system is when it has a resistance, okay? So I'm gonna shut this and make the resistance come back and you'll see that pressure go back up. Okay. So, what I just demonstrated is pumps don't pump pressure. One of the fundamental things of all the hydraulics is flow is speed and pressure is force. So what we're gonna do now is prove to you that flow is speed. So what we're gonna do is time this cylinder coming out at a certain rate of flow and then we're going to cut that in half and show you that it slows it down. So that'll be pretty evident whenever you see that coming out. Alright, so what we're going to do is see over here you see the flow is right at about 1.8 gallons a minute, 1.6 something like that. So what I'm going to do Let's cut that down to about in half. To a little less than one gallon a minute, something like that. And then we're gonna time this coming back out and it should be about half. It may vary just a little bit because of the oil is kind of cold, but we'll give it the old college try here. All right, that was perfect. It's about seven seconds. The other one's about four seconds, so that's perfect. So the point was that when your flow drops, your speed drops as well. Okay, so it slows down. So when you're troubleshooting a hydraulic system, it's very important to understand the fact that flow is speed, and if you're not moving as fast as you're supposed to, you're losing flow somewhere, and that's the point to this video right here. Okay, what we're going to do now is we talked about pressures, force, flow, speed. 
So what we're going to do is prove that pressure is force by using this chart right here. If you go down the left hand column under where it says bore diameter in inches, go down till you see a four inch bore and then come across to the right until you get under where the pressure says 750 psi. Alright, if you look at that number, that's 9,425 pounds of force that, that a 4 inch bore cylinder can push at 750 psi. So what I'm going to do is prove pressure is force. So if you double the pressure to 1,500, then look over to the right under 1,500 and you see 18,851 pounds of force so there you see that number doubled so what that means is if you double the pressure you double the force alright what I wanted to use this chart for is in hydraulic systems a lot of times people have problems with electric motors kicking out and nobody knows why I'm gonna do something uh, to prove that to you here on this chart horsepower is calculated with gallons per minute times pressure divided by 1500 psi which is a constant so what that means is if your gallons per minute increases or your pressure increases your horsepower has to go up with it so if you look at this chart right here here's a kind of a neat chart to show you that sort of demonstrate it you get out on the left hand side of the chart until you find 10 gallons a minute and then you come across to the right until you get under the 1500 psi and it shows you that you need 8.75 horsepower in order to run that system alright if you double the pressure to 3000 with the same 10 gallons a minute you need 17.50 horsepower so what that shows you if you double your pressure at the same gallons a minute you have to double your horsepower as well alright so what we'll do is do the same thing with uh, gallons per minute so if you look over here on the left hand side at 10 gallons a minute and come over until it says 1500 psi you need 8.75 horsepower to run that system alright if you double your gallons per minute and keep your pressure the same you need 17.50 horsepower to run that system so what I want you to get out of this piece right here is gallons per minute and pressure determine your horsepower requirements in a hydraulic system alright what we want to prove with this is hydraulic horsepower either goes to work or it goes to wasted energy in the form of heat and what I've got here is you look at the picture I've got a an example of that there's a hydraulic cylinder working down in the bottom of a machine and over to the right you see I'm measuring the hose temperature at 134 degrees alright and then the one next to that I'm measuring that 90 fitting right there and it's three degrees hotter so what that shows you is that when oil has to work unnecessarily like when it's going across a 90 or it reduces down and it becomes turbulent that is wasted energy in the form of heat and that is called pressure drop hey guys Adam I just wanted to play around with the with the little test unit for a second before we get ready to uh, put this up. So I decided that I was going to run this little uh, hydraulic motor right here. So we've got the uh, we've got the lines hooked to this one valve here and we'll just uh, we'll watch this little motor run. And we can also control the the speed also with the uh, flow control valve.
I just wanted to play with that for a second and show another element of the uh, the training unit here. Paul's already done a good job of showing the little cylinders over here working, so I didn't want to bother with those. So anyway, just having a little fun with it. All right, I hope this first session, that's the end of session one, and hopefully that was beneficial to you guys. Uh, one of the things I really want to uh, you to walk away with, a takeaway from this particular video, is pressure is force and flow is speed. If you have something in your system that's slowing down, that is, is a result of your losing flow somewhere. So these flow meters right here, when we get into the troubleshooting part, you'll see how essential those items are, these items right here. All right. So again, that's a flow meter. That's a pressure gauge, and we went over all the other components. So what we're going to do in the next session is talk a little bit about component operation, how these things operate. Everybody thinks uh, reservoir is just a dumb square thing, but actually it does a lot of other things besides just hold oil. So we'll talk about that in the next session. And not only that, as what you can expect to see when these items fail. Uh, when pumps fail, typically 99% of the time it's not the pump's fault when they fail. It's something else that's happening in the system that actually caused that pump to malfunction. So we'll talk a little bit about that in the next session. Thanks very much.